All right, how's it going, y'all? So today we are going to be going over the number one feature coming out in DSM 7.2, and that is SMB multi-channel. I genuinely think SMB multi-channel is going to have the largest effect of all the new features on DSM 7.2 for home users and even a lot of businesses because it can give you two to four times the overall throughput of copying files to your NAS in most cases without actually having to buy any additional hardware whatsoever. It means that even if your NAS does not support 10 gigabit, you can still very easily get four gigabit, which is a massive upgrade from one gigabit, which you were normally stuck at. So first off, what is SMB multi-channel? So SMB multi-channel is actually what a lot of people think link aggregation does. A lot of people think that link aggregation can give you faster throughput to a single client, but it actually cannot. But SMB multi-channel can. So SMB multi-channel allows your computer and your NAS when they're using SMB. So if you're copying files from Windows File Explorer, Mac OS Finder, the most common way you're copying files to your NAS, it allows them to talk on multiple physical connections. So if your NAS has four one gigabit ports on the back of it and your computer has two 2.5 gigabit ports on it, you are going to be able to combine all of those together to get, in this case, four gigabits of throughput. This is huge and has been something that has been in beta for a very long time for Samba, but has now finally been released full and can genuinely get you those speeds. I'm going to show you how to set it up here and it is incredibly easy. So the way this works is very simple. Right here, in the past, SMB was only ever going to be going over one stream. And so it only ever took one physical connection, which was inefficient if you had multiple connections and just one client trying to communicate. But with multi-channel, now it actually uses multiple streams. And as you can see right here, it actually allows you to mix match speeds and get the fastest of them. And so this is a great diagram right here that really helps show how it works. So this is actually from the announcement that it was coming in. And essentially what it previously did without regular SMB multi-channel, even if you had link aggregation on this NAS, every single client would only be communicating over one network connection. And so even if you had four one gigabit streams over here and had one 2.5 gigabit or two one gigabit streams on this guy right here, it was only ever going to be talking on one of those connections. So whichever is the slowest of these two connections would be the bottleneck and be limiting the overall throughput of the NAS. But now with SMB multi-channel, it is actually allowed to use multiple simultaneous network connections all at the exact same time. And it's very easy to set up. So this is going to be great for people who have two one gigabit ports on the back of their NAS, and it will just instantaneously double their performance if they have two one gigabit ports on the back of their computer or a 2.5 gigabit port on the back of their computer. It allows you to get that mix match speeds and is great. So this really helps kind of show it and it is going to be a massive, massive upgrade. I think a lot of people are gonna use it. And so before we go into how to set this up and everything, I do wanna go over the fact that this is not for everyone. So from my testing, it's been out for a long time. So I've been testing it for a while with TrueNAS and things like that. It is not for every single use case the biggest one I do not recommend people use it for are going to be very small reads and write with random reads and writes that require very low latency. So the vast majority of people who are going to have that are going to be video editors. And so if you're a video editor and you're actually editing video on the NAS, so you're actually using the NAS as the file server for editing your videos and you have enough throughput to actually play back whatever video you're playing back. So for people who are using H.264, one gigabit's totally fine, but for ProRes, you normally want at least 2.5 gigabit if you're gonna be having multi-streams especially. But as long as you've got that connection, as long as you can smoothly play back video from my testing, you will actually get a worse experience because when you enable SMB multi-channel, the packets do not come in as quickly. It does add a bit of latency because maybe one packet takes one route and one packet takes the other, and it takes a little bit to kind of fix that in the end. And so I've noticed from my testing that scrubbing through a timeline, if I had a two 10 gigabit connections set up in SMB multi-channel when I didn't need it, scrubbing through the timeline actually was significantly worse because randomly I would get freezes, which I did not have with just the one 10 gigabit connection. So that is the real case where I found that it might not be for everybody. So I do not recommend it for video editors. 
Now, if you're already having choppy playback with one stream, it cannot hurt, it will probably help, but just know it can lead to a bit of choppier playback when you're scrubbing through a timeline specifically. But other than that, it is phenomenal for massive file transfers to the NAS. And we're gonna go ahead and show how to set it up. My lab environment right now is completely and totally chaotic. I think I'm gonna have some B-roll right here that's just showing it. Basically all I did, and I can also show it over here. So I just hooked up two ethernet cables into the NAS with no custom configuration at all. This is a 923 plus. This is actually the 10 gig adding card. I'm not using it. These are just two one gigabit connections. And if we go into info center, we will see that they are in fact both at just one gigabit and they're plugged into a simple one gigabit switch as well. Currently, I only have one connection to my computer. So we're gonna look at that in the beginning and kind of show you where you're at right now. And then we're gonna add the second connection and this is all gonna be over one gigabit stuff. But from my testing, I have been able to get faster than one gigabit speeds with two 10 gigabit connections. I actually got 1.6 gigabytes per second, pretty sticky. And in some cases it was even up to two gigabytes per second, which was insane. And so first off, we gotta get a baseline where we're just going to do a copy to the NAS with the standard one gigabit connection. And I have not yet enabled SMB multi-channel. So I'm gonna go into my terminal window over here and execute the command SMB util multi-channel dash A. All this does on Mac OS is list SMB multi-channel. And so we can see right here, this is my SSD. This is the 923 plus. And if we look in right here, we can see that SMB multi-channel is not on. So it is disabled on the server and we only have the one gigabit connection. I'll even add the second one in right now just to prove that this is exactly how it worked before SMB multi-channel was out. So I've not enabled it over there. And so we can see that even though I have two physical connections hooked up right here to my laptop, we are only using one of them. And so essentially this is back before SMB multi-channel, I've not enabled it in DSM. And we're just gonna do a very quick, very simple test by dumping data to it. I'm currently dumping it to an internal NVMe volume. So it's gonna be about as fast as we can possibly get. So we do not need to worry about throughput there, but I'm just gonna go on over. And this right here is that SSD folder on the NAS. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy it and select a large file to copy. I got it in here. And we're gonna pull up activity monitor with the network right here so we can more easily see what is going on. So I'm just gonna take this large file and copy it on over. And we're just gonna look and see what kind of throughput we get. So we should get about 125 to 120 megabytes per second. That is the limitation of a one gigabit connection. You divide by eight to get from gigabit to bytes. So you can see we are sticky right at 125 megabytes per second, but technically we could do twice that. We have two one gigabit connections to the NAS and two one gigabit connections to our computer, but it is simply not using them. It is only using a single one of those streams. And if we go back to the NAS, we can actually see that in action right here by looking into the network center. And we can see that LAN one is the only one receiving any data, whereas LAN two is not receiving any data whatsoever. So that is where we were previously. Now I'm gonna go ahead and kill this transfer and eject the volume. And let's go ahead and enable SMB multi-channel. So you need to be running DSM 7.2. I'm currently on the release candidate. And we just go into file services, SMB advanced settings, others, and enable SMB three multi-channel. And that is it. And so the other thing to note, if you have currently set up a link aggregation on your NAS, I would actually recommend disabling that if you're using SMB multi-channel. I have found that it's worse performance and it's kind you can kind of get it to use multiple streams, but I would not recommend enabling it. So I would recommend disabling link aggregation and just having them as two separate network connections just on the NAS. So you can see right here, there are two network connections just on the same network. Technically, this is not how you're supposed to do it, but as long as you've got the two connections and they're the same speed, 
you're not going to run into any issues whatsoever. Technically, this breaks the recommendation for how Ethernet is supposed to work. But because Windows has been doing this for such a long time, this is kind of how Windows said, hey, this is how we're going to do networking. Everything's just kind of supported it, even though it's a kind of unofficial by the IEEE standard. So all I needed to do right here was I've just got two connections and I've got two connections into my computer right here. No custom configuration whatsoever. I'm just going to go ahead and remount that share. And now go back into that terminal window and re-execute SMB multi-channel. And we can see that this has worked. If you have ever disabled SMB multi-channel on your Mac, you may have to re-enable it. There's a terminal command for that. I'll let you look it up because you enabled it the first time. But we can see that the way it's worked is SMB multi-channel on yes. We can see that the server's IP addresses as well as our Mac's IP addresses and connections right here. And we can see that we've got two one gigabit connections. Now, in some cases, Wi-Fi may say it's like 1.2 gigabit, but by default, Mac OS will say, all right, I'm not going to use Wi-Fi, even though it claims to be faster. And so the way that SMB multi-channel works is each computer picks its fastest network connection and then will multi-channel any other connections that are of the same speed. So if I had a 2.5 gigabit connection and a one gigabit connection, both on the exact same NAS, it would only use the 2.5 gigabit connection. And so you can't combine multiple network connections that are different speeds in SMB multi-channel. But we can see right here that it is successfully negotiated and effectively we are going to have a two gigabit connection to the NAS because we can see that the server has two one gigabit connections and our computer has two one gigabit connections. And that is all we had to do. I am planning on doing a much more in-depth video for how you set this up on both Windows and Mac and really kind of going into the nitty gritty of this once the actual full version comes out. So that way I can get full performance testing and show it with two 10 gigabit connections even and things like that. But for now, this is where we are working and it's been incredibly easy to set up. I did nothing custom here except hit one button and plug in two Ethernet cables into both my laptop and my NAS. Now let's go ahead and do the exact same transfer we just did. But this time, we've enabled SMB multi-channel. And you can see immediately, we are getting 250, 240 megabytes per second. We have instantaneously doubled our performance for large file transfers. Just like that, no extra configuration. All we needed was the two one gigabit cables to both the NAS and the computer. So as long as you have the ports on the switch and adapters, you can get these speeds and it does not take any finagling or custom configuration. That's one thing that's been really cool to me about SMB multi-channel is it really just kind of works because it's able to use these multiple streams. It really does not take much custom configuration whatsoever. All I did was go into file services, advanced settings, and enable SMB multi-channel. We can also come in here and we can see that it is in fact using both connections. So we look at LAN 1 and LAN 2, they're both receiving 114 megabytes per second in this frame. And so it is just sticky working on there. Let's also just go ahead and see what happens if I pull one of these connections and see if it continues to transfer. Well, that was certainly not correct. It decided that I went infinite, but once it actually figured out what was really going on, we can see that the transfer has continued on completely fault tolerant as well, which is really, really cool. So you're getting all the benefits of link aggregation and fault tolerance and everything like that without having to run them. I was able to pull out the cable and still get my full transfer speeds on the one cable that is still remaining. The transfer did not fail or anything like that. SMB multi-channel is a savior for a lot of setups and it's just going to be a no-brainer in a lot of cases. Now, once again, if your primary focus is video editing and you don't currently have any issues, except maybe when you're copying files to the NAS, it can feel a bit slow, enable it, but know that if you get some weird behavior with your frames dropping, you should probably disable it because that's probably the reason why you're having these issues. And that is really all there is to it. We were able to incredibly easily set this up and it just really works right out of the box. It's also awesome that it has that built-in fault tolerance 
and it's always just kind of operating in the background. If you have any other questions for me, go ahead and leave those down in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.